So, here's something that's been bugging every pony ever since it happened. Why didn't this guy recognize Twilight Sparkle? I mean, seriously, she's an alicorn. She has a horn and wings. That means she should instantly be recognizable as royalty, right? Well, what if I told you that this business pony simply didn't notice? Yeah, that's right. I'm saying that he just didn't notice that he was talking to an alicorn. Oh, and there's some science that can support that theory too. First of all, let's cut this guy some slack, okay? Actually, come to think of it, what's this pony's name anyway? I mean, practically every background pony has a name, right? There's no way this guy doesn't have a name. Hold on. Are you kidding me? I mean, okay, not every background pony is going to have a name, but come on! Delegate number two. Okay, technically he's unnamed, but I'll just call him Delegate 2 from now on. So, uh, yeah, let's cut Delegate 2 some slack. He was barely even looking at Twilight. How long did that very brief conversation last anyway? Please, won't you let her have this taxi? She has somewhere very important to be right away! Not likely! She can get in line like the rest of us! Eight seconds. That conversation lasted for all of 8 seconds. That might be all that's needed to notice the horns and wings though. Oh, wait, Twilight's wings are folded up. Another thing to consider is perspective. Of course we'd notice her alicorn wings. We're looking at her from the side instead of, oh, I don't know, from the front? When looking at her from the front, her folded up wings are a lot less noticeable. See? Even if they were noticed, we know fake wings exist in some form or another in this universe. Let's also consider for a moment the physical traits of an alicorn. Twilight's certainly taller than your average unicorn, but we've seen tall unicorns before. She has wings, yes, but so does around one third of Equestria's population. Well, based on Hurricane Fluttershy, Ponyville probably has around 100 Pegasi who can fly, and according to this statistical analysis, Ponyville has a population of around 3,100 to 4,300, meaning Pegasi might only make up 2.5% to 3% of the population, but Ponyville was started up by Earth Ponies, so... I'm getting sidetracked again. Uh, whoops, sorry. Anyways, the point is, the so-called unique traits of an alicorn really isn't all that unique on their own. There are lots of unicorns and lots of pegasi, so horns and wings are going to be a common occurrence. It would become ingrained in all of these ponies' minds that unicorns and pegasi are a common sight. The two things that separates alicorns from the herd are two of the most common sights in all of Equestria. She's not like Celestia or Luna, who appear different enough that they could easily stand out from the crowd. Also, she's not wearing her crown, so that's out the window. Wait, wait, wait! Really fluff him up, huh? <laughs> well, okay, even if horns and wings are a common sight, having both is still a pretty big deal. There's no way that an alicorn like Twilight's gonna go unnoticed, right? Well, let's talk a bit about a little something called selective attention. Before we do that though, here's a link to an old psychology test video. If you're on mobile, the link to this video can be found below in the description. You may or may not have already seen this video. If you haven't, why don't you go ahead and check it out, as in right now. Pause this video, go watch that one, then come back here and continue watching this video. So, did you notice the gorilla? Kinda hoping you didn't, otherwise it's going to be way more difficult convincing you of this theory. So basically, selective attention is how we focus on something while ignoring everything else. We can't notice every single detail that's right in front of us, we're not cameras. Our brains don't work that way. If it did, our brains would be overloaded with way too much information. Too much that we can't handle. If we want to see the small details, we have to focus our attention on it and ignore everything else. According to psychologist William James's Spotlight model, when we pay attention to something, 
that something is within our focus. The area around the focus is called the fringe, which is stuff that we kind of see but not really. Then there's the outside area called the margin, which pretty much goes unnoticed. There's another model called the zoom in model, which is kind of like the spotlight model, except with the added ability to change the size of the focus. Of course, increasing the size of the focus means we get less information about that thing we're focusing on, but more than if it were left in the fringe. So what does this mean for Delicate 2? It means that selective attention was at play here when he was talking to Twilight. I mean, just look, he was barely even paying attention. His mind's probably elsewhere, and when he turned his head to talk to Twilight, his focus was on her face. Those wings, which again were folded up, were left in the margin. Now, here's another phenomenon to keep in mind when talking about selective attention. It's a little something called change blindness. You ever play one of those spot the differences games? It can be a little challenging for some people depending on what those differences are. Change blindness is basically what happens when someone's unable to spot these differences and could help explain the limitations of human attention. In 1996, John Grimes and Dr. George McConkie showed a series of photographs to a bunch of test subjects. They found that the phenomenon was strongest when they moved the image and changed the scene at the same time as opposed to simply using grey flashes between images. In fact, subjects were most easily able to pick up changes when their attention was already on those places in the first place. Later studies, however, show that even in these cases, change blindness could still occur. Interesting note about Delicate 2. He was among the delegates in the episode, Princess Spike. Surely he must have realized by then that the pony he towed off was actually Princess Twilight. He must be feeling pretty dumb right about now, huh? Well, actually, no, probably not. That's because memory doesn't exactly work the way you think it does. It doesn't work like a video camera. It doesn't capture every little detail. If Delicate 2 even remembers this incident at all, he probably remembers it incorrectly. Small little details are bound to change, and what he remembers will most likely be different from what actually happened. This is why eyewitness testimonies could become unreliable if handled improperly. Remember the Season 6 episode, Pony Point of View? Perfect example of just how jumbled up memories can become. I'm sure none of the other ponies will even notice I'm here. Uh, look over there! The princess! Oh, this is amazing! Now, to be fair, under normal circumstances, this would be true. No pony would notice that Twilight was there. Except every pony there was informed that Twilight would be there. They'd know to be on the lookout for her. That's why she got the grandiose reception that she did. If they know to expect her, they will notice her. If they don't know and are just caring about their normal everyday routine, they're much less likely to notice. So, what do you think? Could Delicate 2's dismissal of Princess Twilight be explained by selective attention and change blindness? Could alicorns be harder to spot simply because horns and wings are a common sight in Equestria? Could Twilight grab every pony's attention simply by unfolding her wings and wearing her crown more often? Leave your comments below and let me know. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button while you're at it. In 1996, John Grimes and Dr. George McConkie John Grimes and Dr. In 1996, John Grimes and Dr. George McConkie McConkie